And one of the questions I ask people, I ask them, and you've seen it over here, there's a girl standing there with a test, and it just simply says this, are you going to heaven, free test? And you know, it's amazing to me that most people, when you ask them something of that nature, you, are you sure that one day you're going to spend eternity with God? Most people actually would fail the test if it's according to the Bible. And... Um, so we want to talk tonight here about, if you look up here, in this uh, painted in the clouds here, I guess, we want to talk about God. So I'm just going to paint this up. And uh, I want to tell a story about this guy here, and this is supposed to be one of these high wires. Is that okay? Can you hear me okay? Back it up can't see it. Well, it might be a good thing. Okay, hopefully you can see it. Anyway, this is supposed to be portraying a guy on a guide wire. And I'm not sure if you can see this little circle here. Since I'm from Canada and I was talking about this message, we have something uh, that's fairly famous in Ontario that uh, on one side is Canada and the other side is America. And uh, it's a thing there. You know what it's called? Anybody guess? Can you see the wolf? It looks like water maybe? It's called Niagara Falls. And you can actually look this up, Google it or look it up uh, online. It talks about a story and I want to tell you about the person here. And this guy's name is Blondin. He was a famous acrobat. He was one of these guys that would walk across the high wire. And um, they actually set up a guide wire from one side of Niagara Falls to the other. And this guy, of course, he was famous for doing different stunts. And so you can imagine if you were part of the crowd, and you can see here over on this side we have the American side, all the people, all the buildings and stuff, and the Canadian side. You got your two people and lots of trees. Um, but yeah, well, one side Canada and the other side the States. And he came and he said to a bunch of people, imagine if you were one of the crowd. And he asked him this, do you think that I can make it across to the other side? Well, of course, some said yes, yeah, some said no. And he did, he went across. Now he comes back and you're part of the crowd. And you imagine if he said this to you. Do you think I can make it across? Well, if you just saw him do it, you'd say, well, obviously that's a no-brainer. Well, of course you can do it. We just saw you do it. And there's this huge crowd and he says to them, do you believe that I can carry a man across to the other side? Well, of course, you imagine if you were part of the crowd and all the people started cheering, yeah, yeah, do it. You can do it. And so he looked out at this crowd, this massive crowd. And this is, of course, how he made his money, busking. You know, you go down to Key West, and you see them all in Mallory Square, the same type of thing. Except his is a little more dramatic. And he says to them, do you really believe I can do it? And of course, they're shouting, you can do it, do it, London, you can do it. And so he looks out there, and imagine if he looked at you, and he said, sir, do you believe you can do it? And he says, yeah, I believe you can do it, go for it. He says, how about you, ma'am? Yes. Then he looked over another guy and said, how about you, sir? He said, yes. He said, sir, come and get on my back. Well, things changed very quickly there. And this guy, of course, he said right away, no. He said, well, hold on. He just said, you believe. And he said, how about you? And people, of course, started putting their heads down and turning the other way. And, you know, there wasn't anybody there that was willing to do it. Finally, there was a guy in the crowd, and he was kind of like this. Hey, hey, I, I'm good. You probably had a few too many, like maybe some folks here tonight. And he said, I'll do it. And so, you know, Blonde, and because this is such a big ordeal, he set it up the following day for 1 o'clock to do this great event. And so 12 o'clock comes, and the crowd is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, of course, they're waiting for this guy to come. All right, that's a good idea. Now, finally, it's 10. Well, 1 o'clock comes, and it actually goes, and he's no longer, he's not there. I guess he probably sobered up a bit. Well, he looks over and he talks to his trainer and he says, you know what, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to come with me because the people need to see this, of course, how he made his money. 
And so we'll draw him on there. His trainer gets on his back. And they start out. And he's, of course, holding on to Blondin. And as they start out, a wind comes up. They're only about 10 feet off the shoreline. And a wind came up, and the trainer on top, he tried to correct it. And when he did that, they almost plummeted to their death. Now, Blond had said something. He said, listen, in order for us to get to the other side, you have to become like a dead person. Now, what does a dead person do? Well, not much. They're dead, right? So in other words, there's nothing that you can do to help in this situation except become like a dead person. And you know, as the story goes, he did actually do that. And he went across to the other side and he made it across. Now what he did, I'm gonna write it up here, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna paint with a black brush, green letters. I'm gonna paint with a black brush, green letters, okay? If you look up here and look at the green, and this is what he did. He exercised this. You can look at this word. He exercised faith. Well, you know, faith is good, but if it's in the wrong thing, it's not very good, is it? You can have all the faith in the world, but if it's not the right thing, it's not going to do you a bit of good. But what was it that he did? Now, you see, he could say something to all those people that no one else there could say. You know what he could say? He could come up to them and say this. Now, all you guys said you believed. But actually, I was the only one that truly believed, okay? Because I took Blondin at his word. I exercised faith in him. I took him at his word and I trusted him to get me across to the other side and I did it. None of you guys could say that same thing. You could believe he could do it, but you didn't get it. You didn't actually do it. Now what he did was this, and what I want to do right now though is I want to take that and I want to challenge you, because I'm, I want to talk about God and how to get to God. You see, the Bible tells us this, the problem that we have, it's a little three letter word here, I don't know if you can see that, but it's called sin. The Bible says sin is what separates us from God. And the Bible tells us no matter how many good things you do, you can never pay for your sin. And you remember this story here. I'll put it up here. You got two thieves on two crosses, and I guess I better put another cross here in the center. And you got the Lord Jesus in the center. And you know the story. It talks about both these thieves. It says they both had done rotten things, terrible things, enough to put them on the cross. But one of them, the Bible tells us, went to heaven. And the other one actually went down to this place here. Put it up here. One went to heaven and one went to hell. Well, why? One was a better thief than the other thief? No, uh, we'll talk about that story in a moment. But what I've got over here in the box is I want to explain to you what Blondin's trainer did that no one else did. He had to do this. Okay, and we're going to put a word up here. He had to forsake, and then you can see the word here is all. And then he did this. He had to forsake all and trust him. And you know, I've talked to many people and I say, what is your hope of getting into God's heaven? You know what they say? Well, listen, I'm a pretty good person. I go, well, what do you mean by that? Well, I don't do anybody any harm. And I say, well, what do you mean? You've always been good? You've never done anything wrong ever? 
Well, not ever, but you know, I like I don't kick the dog or anything like that. I mean, I try and do the best I can. Some people say this to me, I go to church. I said, well, that's good, you know, I guess. They say, well, I've been baptized. I said, well, listen, you know, if, if I go to McDonald's every day, right, um, it doesn't make me a hamburger. I may look like a hamburger, but it's not going to make me a hamburger. Going to a church or doing good things does not make a person a Christian, even though you might think it does. A Christian is one who simply believes. Now, going back to this story about the two thieves, one of them, as I said, went to hell. The other one, of course, went to heaven. The question is, well, why? Well, one of them, the Bible tells us this, that after a while, he realized what he had done. Remember, he said to this guy, he rebuked his buddy. He said, listen, we deserve what we've done. That's an acknowledgement of sin. We deserve what we're getting for what we've done. But then he looked at the Lord Jesus and he said, you know, this guy, he's done nothing wrong. Well, actually, then he didn't really call him a guy, right? He says, Lord, remember me. And then it's something that you can see this. He realized he had a kingdom not of this heaven and not of this earth. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, the Lord Jesus said to him, listen, you're a dirty, rotten, filthy sinner. There's no hope for you. Not unless some way you can pay me enough money or go to church enough or get baptized or, or do all kinds of good things. That's the only way you can get in. You know, he didn't say any of those things. He said, simply said this, today you'll be with me in paradise. Why? Well, because he trusted. He did two things. Just like this story here, he did this. He turned and he trusted. He turned from his sin, remember the acknowledgement, we deserve what we're getting. And then he trusted that when Christ would die on the cross, that even then he could bring him to be with him in glory. My friend, this is the message of the gospel. This is what they've been singing about tonight, talking about face to face with God, my Savior. He's either your Savior or he's your judge. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't mince words. It says you're either going to heaven or you're not going to heaven, you're going to hell. It tells us this though, that God's not willing that any should perish. His desire is for every person within the sound of my voice here in Hollywood, all over here to be saved. But you don't get saved on your terms. The only way you can get saved is through God's terms. And that's the acknowledgement of your sin. And then believing that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, was enough to pay your debt against God. And then all you have to do is trust Him to do it. Put your confidence, just like the story here, put your whole faith and confidence in what He did. Not something silly like that, but trust that God was well satisfied with what His Son did. And your only hope, my friend, to be spent forever with God in eternity is to take His only remedy for sins. You know, Jesus didn't say He was one of the ways. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes to the Father except through me. And tonight it's my prayer that you would heed the message from God's Word, the Bible. That you would simply turn and put your trust in Christ. And maybe you're here, you're saying, well, we know all about the God stuff. But I, I would ask you this, have you been saved? Have you been saved from the penalty of your sin? If you were to stand before a holy God, one day you will. And He were to ask you, why should I let you into my heaven? Would you actually have the right answer? Would you be able to say, because it's got nothing to do with me. But this one here, He died in my place. He took my penalty. He bore my sin in His own body when He died on the cross. My friend, that's my position, and I hope it's yours. May the Lord bless you. In just a couple minutes, the guys are going to come up, I think, and do some more songs.